It is well known that throughout human history, human beings have been extremely fascinated by snails. They've meant things in certain lores and mythologies. They've represented different things throughout cultures. We've even used them as decor. Snail shell necklaces are one of the earliest forms of jewelry that we have seen and snail shells were even used as currency in some cultures. They can range anywhere from a brownish gray color to even beautiful reds and yellows. And not only are they very valuable and beautiful to us, but they are also extremely useful for snails. It is one of the biggest forms of self-defense for snails. But the big question becomes, how do snails get their shells? Do they create their shells or do they scavenge for their shells? Do they move house eventually or is it a permanent living situation? And what exactly are the shells made of? In today's video, we will be answering these questions. Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's begin with the basics. Snails are gastropods that belong to the phylum Mollusca. Many mollusks, but not all, are characterized by their shells. And each species, including each individual snail species, will have a slightly different way of creating that shell. But no matter what, all mollusks create their own shell. But as said earlier, we will be talking specifically about snails. This includes land snails and aquatic snails. Now, just to put this out there, there are easily over 43,000 species of snails, and I picked one of the lower estimated numbers. And we also don't know everything about these creatures yet, so this video is going to be a very broad statement type of terminology so that I can kind of blanket over most species, if that makes any sense. So yes, there will be species of snails that will differ in their shell makeup, their shell building, all of that sort of thing. So now let's quickly go over what the layers are. We have three to four main layers. These bottom three layers on the diagram are the mantle. The first is the periostracum, which is yellow on the diagram. This is the outermost layer of the shell and is made up of a thin organic material called conchiolin. This layer is composed of proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. The periostracum is usually brown or black in color and can help protect the shell from damage and erosion. This layer is also where the pigment is released. The second layer is the prismatic layer, which is red on the diagram. This layer is located beneath the periostracum and is made of calcium carbonate layers arranged in a prism-like structure. The prismatic layer is responsible for providing strength and rigidity of the shell. The next layer is a little bit complicated. This is the cross lamellar. Not every shell will have this layer. The cross lamellar structures are the most common microstructures in mollusks that are composed of argonites and small amounts of organic minerals, such as distinctive composite structures has a fractured toughness being much higher than that of pure carbonate mineral. And the next layer is the nacreous layer, which is orange on the diagram. This is also known as the mother of pearl layer, this is the innermost layer of the shell and is made of calcium carbonate. It's arranged in thin, flat layers. The nacreous layer is responsible for the smooth, iridescent appearance of the shell and also provides additional strength. Not every shell will have this layer. And as you may know, snails will have all kinds of different shell types and colors. For example, I have a Helix Aspersum shell here and a Whelk shell. Helix Aspersums are land snails and they don't really get much bigger than this. Whelks, however, are aquatic snails and they're quite a bit larger. And the biggest thing I kind of want you guys to see the differences is that spiral there. How for this one, the spiral is on the side and on this one, it's kind of where the back would have been. All of these differences aside, we do know there is one thing they all have in common, and that is all snails will come from an egg. Inside of these tiny eggs is where the shell forms before the snail is even old enough to hatch. It all begins with the mantle. The mantle is not a part of the shell, but rather a very important organ for creating the shell. Inside of the mantle is the shell gland, which is very appropriately named. The shell gland is an invagination where the ingredients to make the shell are secreted and structured. 
And before it's time to hatch, the snail's already created what is called a protoconch, which is the first component of the shell. The protoconch is colorless, very soft, and has an opening or mouth. The mantle will add new layers of calcium carbonate and proteins to the mouth from below. This new material will then harden at the mouth and continue to grow in spirals around the protoconch. This will gradually spin around, becoming the apex. Depending on the species, the protoconch will either stay there forever or will break off at some point. Once the snail hatches, this protoconch is very thin and very frail. So its top priority is to begin eating so that it can get all of the calcium carbonate and proteins it can get. As the snail will grow, so will the shell, spiraling around and creating a dome where the snail will reside. Snails of all ages and sizes will need to continue to eat foods that are very high in calcium to keep up on healthy growth. If they don't, their shells will become thin and pretty weak, making them very susceptible to trying out predators, waves if they're aquatic, you name it. Their shell is like their safe haven, so when they don't take proper care of it, it's detrimental. Now let's look a little closer and see what these shells are really made of. First, the organic molecule layer is secreted. This will become the future periostracum. This layer becomes the base where the snail can perform biomineralization. Biomineralization is a process by which mineral crystals are deposited in the matrix of living organisms. This process gives rise to the inorganic based skeletal structures such as bone or shells. The minerals needed are deposited on the organic matrix and slowly built upon. To put it shortly, snail shells are made of a lattice of different minerals and organic molecules. Snail shells have a mineral content of 95-99% to 99 per weight. That remaining 1-5% to 5 is organic matter, which essentially makes the shells biologically made rocks, which is pretty cool. Of that 95-99%, to 99%, calcium carbonate is the primary ingredient. The average seashell that you might find whenever you walk across the beach are mostly calcium carbonate. If you put those shells in vinegar, you can actually watch them dissolve which is a cool little experiment if you want to see. It's just the vinegar reacting with the calcium carbonate. Now to better understand snail shells, you have to understand what calcium carbonate is. It comes in two varieties. It comes as calcite as well as aragonite. And the only difference between these two is stability. Calcite is the stable form of calcium carbonate, where aragonite is metastable. Something is metastable if it is unchanging. However, given a small nudge to this, we'll put it in a more stable form. In the case of aragonite, it can be nudged into its calcite form. And sea snails are more likely to have aragonite in their shells. Sea snails deposit aragonite on the inside of their shells and calcite on the outside of their shells. This inner part is called nacre. I actually do have a piece of some shell. I actually don't know what this is from. Um, I got it from a friend and just kind of thought it looked pretty. But you can really see the, the nacre in this. If you see that sheen, that pearlescent sheen, that is what that is. And it's kind of a cool piece because you can see a lot of those really cool layers going on. Now back on track. Interwoven between these minerals are proteins. Protein will give strength, flexibility, and the lightweighted quality of a shell. So where do they get these ingredients? Well, mostly snails get them from the food they eat and the water they drink even sometimes the soil or the water that they reside in. Land snails have even been known to chew on the sides of houses in limestone if they're in a more calcium deficient area. As the beauty of these shells continue and our curiosity of them continues, so does the mystery. The more answers that we try to find, the more questions we seem to come up with, and scientists still don't have all of the answers. But hopefully, we as humans remain curious so that we can strive to answer these questions. And with that, that's all the information I have with you this week. I hope that you learned something from today's video or at the very least found it entertaining. Like this video for the algorithm and comment down below if you have any animal questions that you want me to try to answer for you. All of my links including my Instagram account, my art Instagram account, my Facebook group and my wife and I's Etsy shop will be in the description down below, as well as all of the links I used in today's video to learn about this topic. Subscribe if you are into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.